everyone, it is Jordan here. Uh, now that we are a couple of months into 2020, I wanted to follow up as promised. I shared a few months back and I will link below uh, the video of my new tool notebook planner with Agendio inserts and really wanted to take the time to establish a system and figure out what was gonna work before I came back to share with you all kind of a bit of a planner walkthrough and what I'm doing for 2020. Um, it was something that in the past I or in the past couple years especially I've really let kind of what I wanted dictate how I plan instead of letting how I plan dictate what I need if that makes any sense um, so this year I'm really focusing on really truly just planning and letting the rest follow which is how I ended up with this behemoth of a planner um, but I'm excited to walk through it with you all because it actually is really working and keeping me on track and keeping me organized in a way that I felt like uh, planners haven't lately. So I wanted to take some time to get this set up in a way that really made sense. Um, and then also with just working full time and chasing a toddler, um, timing to film is has been a little bit hard to come by those quiet moments. So um, fingers crossed, this little guy is taking an early nap. So we're gonna hope that <laughs> he stays asleep and we don't have any potential screaming part way through and we're gonna hope that nobody shows up at our door so that our dog doesn't start barking and I'm just gonna start going through this instead of uh, instead of talking about all the worst case scenarios. So this is a letter size tool notebook um, that I purchased just at Office Depot, so nothing super fancy. This was the planner edition, so underneath where this sticker was, um, there was, it just said planner. Um, this is one of my most favorite stickers that I've carried around forever um, from brandedconfidence.com. Um, I had the pleasure of hearing Melanie Spring speak at a conference and she is just phenomenal and an incredible speaker and an incredible person. Um, so if you have a chance to kind of follow along with her, she has some, some great stuff online and is building this amazing community. Um, but do epic shit is just a thing that, uh, I try to aspire to. So I have the, the black tool planner notebook um, where I just covered the planner with a sticker. The rings you'll see from the last video already changed. Um, I'll have to look up the brand on Amazon. I forgot to do that, but this is just a, a brand on Amazon of rings. These are one and a quarter inch rings. I went from the three quarter inch rings this came with up to one inch gray rings from Tool. Um, and quickly realized that they are just not gonna be big enough. So it is a behemoth of a planner, but again, it just makes sense and it works. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to get these fun kind of like oceany blue rings in here. Um, you'll also see I added this clip. I believe this is a Rifle Paper Co. clip um, because there is a pen loop back here where I keep a Pentel Energel pen with a Unisigno 0.38 refill. Um, but I wanted to have a pencil and a highlighter with me. So this has actually worked really well that I just clipped this this binder clip to the front of the planner and I was worried about it going in and out of my bag um, and worried about it just kind of jostling around quite a bit and pens falling off and the clip falling off. But so far so good. I kind of just slot it into my bag this way and pull it out that way and um, a pen has popped off maybe once or twice in the last couple months. So that's working out really great and allows me to carry a uh, Kurutoga 0.3 millimeter pencil and then a um, zebra mild liner, which changes depending on how I'm feeling. I just went with a more spring color instead of the gray that I had been going with. And then I also added lots of top tabs. It just seems to make more sense in previous planners. I've always had a lot more side tabs, but it's easier to immediately know my last tab is my week or the second to last tab is my month. So that's been really nice. Um, so up here, I just made these, I used Carrie Harling's method of using um, whatever tabs I had lying around and then doing packing tape over the writing so that they're a little bit more durable, but they are all movable, which is really nice. So really I'm keeping it very simple again, letting what I really need dictate what I have. So I have capture next, the year, this month, this week, and then back here I have projects and reference. So not a whole lot, but enough that it, it's breaking things down into the, the categories that I need them. And then if I need to add more, I have the uh, freedom and flexibility to do so. So inside um, the inner pocket, this is not being used as my wallet, obviously because it's massive like I have with previous um, pocket and personal ring bound planners. 
So really all that I keep in here, I keep some business cards behind this slot here. Um, this slot's empty because again, I'm working on not just trying to fill things for the sake of filling them. I'm trying to figure out ways that it actually makes sense. So sometimes I tuck smaller pieces of paper back here, but right now it's just empty. And then this is kind of a temporary holding place for stuff that doesn't need to be in here long term. Um, so right now I have the sexually or ultrasound pictures from our anatomy scan. And then just something that I had to proof a document that I had to proof for work that I just threw in here to get it home to proof it and bring it back. Um, and then I made all of my divider pages just with laminated cardstock. Um, and I just took quotes that I found inspiring or, you know, all the quotes that I'd carried around, you know, on a post-it note forever, finally just typed them up, um, laminated them, punched them, and are, I'm using those as my dividers so that they're not too thick, but they're enough that it's a little bit more substantial than just a paper divider. So this is my front kind of dashboard. So the second I open the book, I have an obscene amount of different sizes, shapes, and colors of post-it notes which is just really helpful. A lot of times I'll have a quick temporary note that I need to jot down. So it's a way to get those down quickly. And then this was just an adhesive pocket from I think Michael's. It was like in the dollar section at Michael's forever ago for a little pack of six or eight of them or whatever. But it works perfectly for stamps, for quick receipts, for little things that I wanna keep in here as well. So I have that up front. And then it goes right into my capture section. Um, again, just a quote that I thought was funny and ironic and so perfect in so many ways. So I use my capture section a lot. I have a couple different kinds of paper back here. Um, I kind of sometimes also use this to capture any random little notes. For example, these are a bunch of words that I want to hand letter and just haven't had the time, so I've kind of stuck them there. Um, but this is a, a page I designed quickly in InDesign specifically for work notes. Um, I, I found myself kind of creating this template over and over again by hand in meetings. So I would sat there for a minute and was like, you know what, this will take me 10 minutes to throw together an InDesign really quickly and just create a PDF that I can reprint um, instead of buying kind of a fancier planner paper. Um, so this is just printed on regular kind of printer paper at my office um, because these end up going in files that are related to exhibitions or to programs or to whatnot. Um, so just created a really simple template of subject attendees at the meeting, the time and date of the meeting, all of the notes. And then for me, the biggest thing was really breaking out my action items and making sure that I had those not buried in here. I can immediately, you know, note, 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 note. This is something I need to do. And then I created a section to mark it either as merged into my task tracker for work, or did I just go ahead and do it because it was something that I could do really quickly after a meeting. So I really keep most of this section is actually just those blank pages ready to go for meetings. But then I do keep um, a decent amount of graph paper and lined paper back here as well, depending on you never know what kind of notes that you need. So I have all of those pages just kind of ready to go as a kind of mini blank capture notebook. Uh, the next section is ironically next. Um, have another quote there. Emily McDowell has so many fun ones. So I have another quote there. This section right now is blank. Um, really, I use this section mainly to prep for when I have the time and think ahead to prep for the day. So for example, if I know that I have a couple of different meetings, um, say I have three different meetings with three different subjects with three different people, I will try either that morning or the day before to pre-fill out these. So for example, for my one-on-ones with my boss, I would pre-fill this out and then in here I would add any notes that I wanna bring to the table. But then instead of leaving it in the capture section, I would bump it up to the next section so that once I get to that day, I have those pages ready to go and I don't have to even think about it. So this section honestly is blank a lot because unless I have those meetings coming up, I don't really have anything living there. Um, and then after that, we kind of go into my calendar section, the back, the back side of that divider um, has a ton of tiny post-it notes with um, different meal items. We try to menu plan a week at a time. Our jobs are a little crazy, so it becomes a challenge sometimes. Um, but I have just, and you'll, you'll see I actually don't have the last two days of this week planned out, but I'll show you kind of how, how we typically use it. Um, I'm actually gonna pull one of these off so I can kind of show you that in just a minute and make it a little easier. So I just keep those on the back tab, uh, on the back of this divider and it works really well. Um, these are just pages for different events that I haven't had a chance to plug into the planner yet or merge into the planner. So 
one of them is I registered for a conference series, a local conference series, so I just need to take those dates and merge them in. So I just printed that confirmation page so I could do that. Um, because this was the tool planner edition, it came with this page of stickers. I'll be honest, I clearly, there's like three missing. I don't use them a ton. I'm not a big sticker planner and I kind of keep forgetting they're here, but every once in a while, it's just a nice little call out to, to something specific. So they don't take up much space. It's one page. I've kept them in there kind of for fun. Um, this is another page that came because this is the tool planner. I don't use it a whole lot, but as you can see, it's a full pullout um, planner calendar for the year. And then the back side is more of a reference kind of small checkbox. Again, not using this a whole lot. So this will be one of those things if I do find myself kind of crammed for space would probably be one of the first things to come out. But for now, I don't need the room. So I'm just kind of leaving it in there to see. Um, I have a big project coming up. We're redeveloping our website at work later this week. So this might actually work out really well in terms of kind of blocking out um, timelines for that. There's just so many things that who knows what it might be useful for. So I'm keeping it in there until I know for sure. And then we go into, this was one of the test pages that I had printed of my Agendio design before I actually ordered it. So I had this um, kind of to test out how I would use the pages before I, before I pulled the trigger and um, clicked order and realized I really liked the setup. So then we launched into my actual Agendio pages. Um, so I, like I said in my last video, and if you wanna learn more about Agendio, I definitely recommend going back and watching that one because I dive way into those inserts. Um, but I have a yearly planner, January 1 through December 31, and then those are my model numbers for the monthly and the weekly, 12562 and 12318. And I did customize those, so they won't look the same as they do on the website, um, but I have been absolutely thrilled with this planner and how it's worked. Um, I do have the Agendio year to actually tabbed off up here because I reference this constantly at work when looking at dates and looking ahead. So it's really nice that they have, it automatically comes with 2020 and 2021. So you can do kind of back planning and forward planning um, or current planning, I guess, and forward planning as well. So that is something that is incredibly useful um, and I'm really, really um, enjoying having those in there. I did add the, the inserts from Agendio. If you order a bound book or a spiral bound book, you can add month tabs. That is not or was not when I ordered at least a current option with the inserts. So I did order these from Intco, I-N-T-C-O on Etsy. Um, so I ordered these tabs. They're just sticker tabs that stick onto either side, but it's nice because the month is on one side and then the day or the number that corresponds to that month is on the back. So you can reference it both ways. Um, and he graciously <laughs> accepted a ridiculous custom color request. Um, he, there is a multicolor option and there was a custom color option. And I went in with, hey, can we make these match all of my monthly page colors to the agenda, agendio that I designed? And um, Kurt there graciously accepted that request and came through with some great tabs. They're really thin, they're really lightweight, but I have not had an issue with a single one falling off. And um, the order was really affordable and came with four sets of the months, which was great because I did mess up and accidentally put one on the wrong page, so I had a backup, but now I still have two solid years and then another incomplete set. Um, moving forward for future years. So that is really, really nice and it allows me to just quickly flip to the months that correspond um, to each month in my planner. So I have those in the front. Um, speaking of months, my next tab is this month. I'm gonna be really honest. I have been not using my months um, outside of reference, really. I tried to kind of put some deadlines in. I may continue to try to do that. Um, but this is the one, the one spot that with a weekly and being able to carry the full week or carry the full year of weeklies in the planner, I honestly haven't found myself using my monthlies like I thought that I would. Um, so this will likely be a potential kind of chop in my 2021 agendio, um, just to save space because it's frankly not really being used. I'm, I'm using this section up here to track my PTO balance, but frankly I can do that on the first weekly of each month or on a blank page which slotted between each month. I mean, there's so many things I can do um, I mean, it's a beautiful layout, it's huge, there's a ton of space, um, but I just don't see the sense in duplicating all of my appointments um, because I can slot them right into the weekly, so I, I don't 
see myself referencing them in two places. I mean, I could take out the weeklies, but again, I like having the whole year in there. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to push to use it for work deadlines, but again, it just hasn't really come to fruition. So I'm really working on and really focusing on making sure that my planning style is dictating what I use. So right now I'm not worried about it and I'm not gonna worry about it if I go back and you know all of the monthlies are blank with PTO balances on them because it'll be fine. Um, but I do have those there. And then in between the monthly pages and the start of the weekly pages for each month, I do have a monthly tracker. Um, and the monthly tracker takes up half my page and then the second half of that page is automatically lined. I was hoping I could make this grid, but I didn't see a way to do it. And then I have grid paper on the other side. So my monthly tracker, I pre-printed the things I knew that I wanted to track, um, my water, vitamins, floss, etc. Obviously, I'm a couple of days behind, so I need to go back and fill that in. But that has been a really cool way, and I've, I've used this more than I thought I would. This was a thing I thought I wouldn't use, and was like, oh, we'll see if it works. And I've really found myself using it and really love being able to see at the end of the month how many days of the month or what percentage of the month, because I'm a geek on stats and numbers, I was actually able to do these things, um, especially reading, running, and crocheting. Those are kind of my my hope to do's each day, not my need to do's each day. So it was really great. Obviously, I failed in reading in February, but um, the other two things, it's just nice to see how often I'm able to get those things into the rest of the crazy schedule. And then I've been using... Um, this section down here, you'll see when I do my weeklies, I have a spot for a weekly task list. But when I do have something that I wanna get done within a month, but I don't have a specific even week that it needs to go on, I've been kind of plugging it in here so that when I'm referencing it in my habit tracker, I can migrate those in. You know, This can be done any time this month. When I have a week that's a little lighter on a task list, I might just bump it over um, and go from there. And then these pages are, again, something I frankly haven't used yet, but I have them here. Um, if I do, did have a monthly list, you know, perhaps if I was, uh, if we were going out of town or if we were doing something, I could do a packing list here so I could have a lot more space. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, it would be a great spot when I do have future appointments to put questions for those appointments. Again, learning every day. So um, just a big blank grid page that I have a lot of different things that I could do with. And then straight from there, we go into my weeks. Um, so I'm just gonna bump straight to this week so you can see. And how I have this set up, you might not be able to see the whole page in one go. Um, but this will show you, this goes um, Monday through Friday, hourly columns on the left page, and then Saturday, Sunday, the reference calendar, and a large big block for notes on the right page. Um, so what I've been doing with these and kind of blocking them off is the days at the top, I put the weather each day above there because it's a great little spot to tuck it and then I can look back and see it easily and it doesn't really interfere. I mean, the numbers are still large enough that it's really easy to still reference the days. And then this kind of column or row of boxes here, I use for tasks that must get done on that day. Um, so I pre-printed a lot, like our garbage and recycling day. I try to do a photo review and clean up in my phone every Sunday. So anything that's day specific, um, this week we have no birthdays, but birthdays also show up up here. Payday shows up in here. So those are right up here. So I see them associated with the day, but not mixed into the insanity. Um, and then I also write in any day specific tasks. Um, I, I have that space to write those in. So that's been really helpful. And then it launches kind of straight into my, my weeks. So I have my planner set up. Um, again, this was a customization I did with this template in Agendio that um, my day runs from 6 a.m. till 11.30 p.m., so basically midnight. But I do have two blank spots above the 6 and two blank spots below the 11.30 so that if, you know, for example, I, I run before my boys get up every morning, so, or not every morning, I wish, three mornings a week. Um, so obviously that happens before six, but I have those two lines to be able to fill that in, which is really nice. And then we're not frequently up after 1130 at night, but occasionally my husband will work late or there's something crazy. Um, so I have those two spots down there that um, work really well to be able to do that. And then the bottom of the page is I left a little bit of a blank and I just fill in our dinners. So this is where I was talking about uh, a week like this was a little crazy um, It with everything going on with coronavirus and COVID-19. 
I'm in marketing public relations, my husband's in the media, it's been a crazy week, so we've really kind of failed on the meal planning. But what we typically would do is we also do this on a digital calendar because um, that's how my husband's brain works, but I just write my meals on little stickies and then for the week, at the beginning of the week, you'll see a whole row of little yellow stickies down here with our meals. And it makes it really easy if things move around, I can easily move them around. If someone works late and we end up picking up pizza, you know, we can easily just change that out. And then I just go in and write in what we actually had for dinner um, each evening or sometimes the next morning if I, if I forget to do it that night. So um, that makes it really kind of simple for meal planning. And then that's where I kind of had that bank that I showed you back here of the different meals. Um, so obviously haven't really started anything for Saturday or Sunday, but I did dedicate a full column to each one. Uh, not something I necessarily use every week, but I mean, there's there's still a lot of weeks that, that a, a Saturday or a Sunday is really full. So it still makes it worth it. I'm, I'm trying, I'm really trying this year to embrace white space um, and not feel like everything has to be really full. I actually get kind of excited when I see an evening where I'm like, huh, we had all the usual insanity of bedtime and playing and puzzles and books, but we didn't have anything super crazy. And then over here, I have the current month and the future month in my um, reference calendar, which is really nice. It makes it pretty simple if I'm not looking too far ahead or too far back to not have to go all the way to the yearly page. And then this is my tasks and notes. And I've tried since the start of the year. Let's see if I can quickly find one. Um, I've tried since the start of the year a slew of different ways, whether I do two different columns, one for tasks, one for notes. But what I've really landed on is... Um, starting my notes from the top and numbering them, and I'll show you kind of how I annotate them in a minute, but numbering any notes from the top to the bottom, and then starting my tasks kind of somewhere near the bottom part of this page. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to write all the way down here. I was trying to like start from the bottom and work my way up so that they would just meet. Um, and it was just, my, my handwriting was driving me crazy. Um, so I would either pull them out and start down there or what I've been kind of doing is starting somewhere near the bottom of the page, working my way down with tasks. And if it's a week that gets crazy, then I can just add any new tasks above and then start working toward the middle. So, so far so good. If, uh, you know, this was last week, so nothing, I had a lot of space left in between. Some weeks do get pretty full. Um, I have not encountered a week yet where I need even more space. If I did, I figured I would either, that would be a good, solution where I could reference kind of that blank page um, near the monthly pages or just tip it tip in a page I haven't really figured out how I'm going to handle that yet because I haven't gotten there yet um, but I basically have created an annotation system for my notes so if I have a note that doesn't relate to something in my calendar I just do a little like side carrot and write the note and that's it and I'm done um, but since I one of my fears with going back to columns and these are just over an inch wide so they're not they don't give me a ton of space for a detail here and that was frankly one of my biggest concerns in losing a day per page planner and going back to a weekly planner this solution has been perfect i have not struggled with it at all because it's it's a large page i can see everything all at once all i've been doing is basically annotating my notes like you would uh, an essay or or a a book a reference book in anything that I can't fit all of the detail here, I just number it. And at the beginning of the week, I start with number one. So my first run, I do track kind of what I'm doing a, a training plan right now. So I track what run that I did. Um, so that was the first thing that week. It got marked with a one. I come over here, I put one, I you know write down the run that I did. Um, we had a financial planning meeting on Monday, my husband and I. So then over here, Here's the kind of the notes and the things that I need to take away from that meeting. Um, you know, unfortunately, Wednesday afternoon, I had a couple hours with some pretty bad waves of nausea. Kind of wanted to note that. Um, so I just kind of highlighted down that whole chunk of time. Didn't want to, you know, try to scribble in here all of that. Put it and now it's over here. So it's been working really, really well um, that when I am going back through my week, if I need to look at anything or reference anything historically, you know, it's very common sense to then say, oh, okay, let's track this over here and see what this was. So this has been working phenomenally well. I'm really loving it. Um, and again, I, I can't imagine a reason that that would change, but once again, letting my, my planning style dictate the system instead of the other way around. So that is how the rest of my um, 
weekly and monthly pages flow. Like I said, I haven't really filled out a whole lot of the monthly, so we'll see if those make the cut for 2021. Otherwise, I will probably plan on just doing something similar to just this one page because you can insert blank pages in between, um, in between your weeklies. So I could always just simply do this one page um, with a blank grid page on the back so that I can still have the tracker because I've really enjoyed having that. So that carries us through the whole calendar section. And then my next, let's see here, it'll be easier to come up here. My next is projects. Um, again, just that laminated, laminated page with the quote. Um, this section is nearly empty right now, I'll be really honest. As we do have more projects, we do have a house renovation project coming up for sure. And then I have a few work projects coming up that I might wanna keep notes with me. But I really try to keep those in the project files at work. This is already a behemoth. Um, my bag, my work bag, uh, well, it's my everyday bag really, has a perfect spot for this. So I do take this home back and forth to work every day, um, but I don't wanna make it any bigger than it already is. So work projects tend to stay in file folders that I just carry separately to meetings because this is letter size, it's easy to grab this, you know, a stack of file folders and go. Um, but if there are any projects that I have to have with me for whatever reason, I can have them in here. Right now, I just have this little half page with kind of a task brain dump. So not a whole lot exciting in the project section, but like I said, as we jump into that house renovation project, certainly will be a time where I will likely have a lot more detail in here and timelines. And this is a place where I do see the potential for additional tabs. Um, so I do see, you know, a house tab or who knows what else is coming down the line. Life is a little crazy, so we just never know. Um, but right now it's pretty blank. It just has that task dump list so that I can constantly kind of refer to that and fill those into either the months or the weeks or the days when it's appropriate. And then my last section is my reference section. Um, shocker, another quote. So I have that. And then this section is really self-explanatory. <laughs> Anything that that needs to be referenced frequently. So um, right now this isn't done very nicely and I wanna redo it, but right now I have things like, uh, I, I homebrew kombucha, so I have a brew tracker of um, what days I bottled on and then what flavors I did. I need to expand this. I, I want to, again, this is something I'm hoping to plug into InDesign at some point, because I would love to, instead of just bottling day and the flavors, have notes of, okay, did we like these flavors, did we not? Because right now I kind of look back and I'm like, I think we liked that one. and. We tend to remember the ones we really liked and really didn't like, but the in-between ones we kind of forget about. So um, I have things like that. I have a, uh, for every exhibition we do at work, we do a, a guide, an internal staff guide to that exhibition. So I have that in there. Um, I am also the one at work that our, our main phone lines, when the public calls in, we are a museum, so when the public calls in and has questions, they get kind of our general line. Well, we had some severe weather over the winter um, and I am the one that even if we're home on a snow day, calls in remote and changes that messaging. Um, so I have the reference information on both the call-in information as well as I, I honestly just keep a script in here. It's a one page script because it's quite a lengthy message of, of all of the details that people need to know. So I keep things like that in here. Um, I have a like daily pregnancy tracker in here and I'm not gonna go through all of it because um, some of it is not kind of marked off, but I do have a daily pregnancy tracker. Uh, the downside of the poor second kiddo is, you know, the first time around, I could tell you exactly when I was 24 weeks and three days or whatever it might, might have been. Uh, this time around, I have to reference it more than I care to admit, say, oh, I think I'm this far. Um, so I, I keep that in there and again, I'm not really using it, but it's there if I need it. Um, and then this was a component that came with the tool planner. It is an important dates list for 2020, 21, and 22. Um, everything from, it's United States, Canada, and Mexico. So everything from St. Patrick's Day, Earth Day, you know, a civic holiday in Canada, uh, religious holidays, it has just about everything. Not referring to it a ton. Again, it was one page, so I figured why the heck not, I'll leave it in there. And then the back side of that page has a United States area codes map. Um, again, I don't think I have referenced this once because I am notorious for Googling when someone that I don't know calls me, so I don't really, don't really reference this at all. Again, the holidays I'll probably end up referencing more, but it's one sheet of paper. It's not taking up a ton of space. If I start really 
kind of busting at the seams of these rings. I've told myself I refuse to go any bigger than this. I'd love to go smaller. I don't see it happening, but I'm not going any bigger. So um, I, if I do find myself kind of crunch for space, I'll go through and pull those things that just are there but don't need to be. And then finally, this is just a, a clear double-sided pocket and it's been kind of my landing place. I put another one of those Michael sticker pockets here to hold a bunch of different stickers. Again, I put them in here. I haven't used them once, but they're here just in case that I need them. Um, threw a couple paper clips back here, again, in case I need to, to put something in. And then I usually have more in here, but I need to make more. I, I um, emboss stationery from time to time and I haven't gotten around to it. So this is just a store-bought um, note sheet and an envelope um, just to have in here. It's kind of crazy how often all of a sudden it's like, oh, I need to jot a little note to someone or someone did something nice and I want to write a little thank you or you forget it's somebody's birthday or what have you. So I try to keep a couple of different note cards in here, like a thanks one, a general one, um, just so that I have those on hand for when I need them. But this reminds me, I need to put on my task list to, to get some more cards made. And then the back side, I just have um, right now I just have these are tool branded little double-sided I mean, quarter sheet I guess um, a little it came as a memo pad but I pulled a couple of the sheets off to put in here because this is nice for those times where I don't need a whole piece of paper and I don't want to waste a whole piece of paper on something and then back here I just have this was from um, this is an estate planning um, kind of worksheet from our financial planning meeting earlier this week and it's something that we want to tackle this month and it kind of works that it sits behind the pen loop and um, doesn't take up a ton of room in the back of the book and hasn't fallen out yet so I'm kind of keeping it there so I know exactly where it is until we have find time this month to do that. Um, so that is really the system in a nutshell. Um, it's like I said working really well. The Agendio pages have been incredible and I mean, I have truly seen my productivity change this year with using them. Um, you know, I think it's also evidenced in really seeing how often I have been able to fit in things like crocheting and like running that I wasn't before. Tasks are not being forwarded 18 million times because um, they're not, you know, on each day and I'm not bump bumping them day to day. Um, having that weekly task list and that weekly layout has really been helpful Um but it, it has, it's been a really good system. One thing I forgot to show you because I, I don't have any of my tasks done for this week. So like I said, this week has been crazy. What I've been doing with tasks is I, I write them down and if they can happen any time in the week, um, I just write them in the weekly task list, but I still like to have some idea of when they were accomplished that week. So what I've been doing is crossing them off when they're done, but just also noting the day of the week that they were done over here so that when these are done, obviously these will all say Saturday or Sunday, but it's a nice way to be able to reference when those tasks got done. And then it also makes it make a lot more sense where if you see, you know, a big chunk of white space on a day, but then you look over here and there are eight tasks that were done that day. It's like, oh, okay, that makes a little bit more sense on what was going on. So um, those inserts have truly been working brilliantly for me. I will certainly be making some tweaks for 2021, um, but I, I really don't see the system changing a whole lot um, between now and then because it's just, it's working so well. So I think that that's about it. We're already at over half an hour, so I don't wanna ramble on too long, but if there are any specific questions, definitely post them down below. I'm happy to answer anything here um, or via social media, Instagram. Um, Twitter, etc. So if there are those questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I, I hope you all are having a, a warmer, sunnier day than we are. We just got about a half an inch of snow. So my, my son is insisting that Christmas is coming back, which let's all hope that we have a little bit of time between, between now and more cruddy, snowy weather. So hope you all are having a great day. Let me know if you have those questions. And um, I'm hoping to be back soon with a walkthrough of my new bag. I'm using a Pond LA bag that I absolutely adore. So hopefully I'll be able to find some time in the next couple weeks to film that and show you how that's being used. In the meantime, hope you all stay well. Talk to you later.